Welcome to this Maps BI tutorial on how to layer other dashboards and maps on top of your very own dashboard. In this case, what we're looking at is an e-commerce store performance dashboard, looking at various metrics such as average days to repurchase, average order size, average revenue per customer, and so on and so forth as we scroll down this dashboard. Now let's take a look at this map. What we're looking at uh, on this map, according to our legend here, is a heat map of where all the orders occurred. So we can see a large proportion happen in Toronto here with some varying orders happening on the outskirts. Now that's all well and good if I want to look at where all of these orders actually happened, but let's say I want to look at not only where they happened uh, and the number of orders, but the volume of the revenue from each of these orders. To do that, let's hover over the legend here, and we can see a number of different metrics that have been brought in. And these are automatically brought in for you uh, by Maps BI from the CSV file that you upload or the API you connect to. So we have various metrics that we're looking at here. A heat map of orders is one we're looking at right now. We can look at the quantity per order. We can look at you know the revenue um, uh, per order and uh, you know the days since last purchase. In this case, let's take a look at a heat map of the sum of uh, the revenue for each location. Okay, so to do that, what we're going to do is we're just going to hover over heat map of revenue and then scroll over to sum and click on sum. And as you can see, what happened up here is the map actually changed to show us the sum of the revenue for each of these specific locations. And you can see the legend changed here to say heat map of the sum of revenue. Okay, and it's no big surprise because we knew that most of our orders came from Toronto, uh, so that the probable, probable hypothesis would be that uh, the, the sum of the revenue would be higher in Toronto. But now let's take a look at uh, the average revenue per order. Okay, to do that, what we're going to do is uh, again hover over um, the legend here, hover over the heat map of revenue, and instead of looking at the sum, we're going to have a look at the average revenue per order and click on that. Now what this is showing us is that in the Toronto area no longer is it the highest, uh, it may have the highest revenue but the highest revenue per order uh, is up here in Markham uh, versus a, a, a middle of the ground 91 here in Toronto and uh, lower uh, volume uh, average uh, order volume in uh, St. Catharines. Now let's take a look as we zoom in even further. You can obviously see how this distribution is made up. Um, so we've got in the uh, the downtown core $130 average revenue size per order versus out here in the Etobicoke area, you know, an average revenue size per order of 40, which is drawing down that average a little bit. Let's scroll back out to uh, our previous view. Okay. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to show you how we can layer on some more data to give us some additional intelligence into what we're looking at. Okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to layer in some population demographics data uh, to showcase you know, how age might have an effect on our orders. Okay? So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to click on the Connections tab over here to the left. And this gives me a listing of all of the different public dashboards that I can go in and connect to. So I'm going to look for some census data here. I believe it's 2011 census data, as you can see here, 2011 Canadian census data. And all we have to do here is click connect to have that show up on our dashboard. And there we have it. Now, it doesn't look like it's in the greatest format, but let me explain to you what's happening here. So we can see that our uh, original line of business data for the e-commerce store, the heat map of the average revenue, revenue, is in blue, right? Those numbers look familiar. Whereas we've got heat map of what's called postal code data in green. Now that doesn't mean a heck of a lot. That is just telling us that there's a, a number of uh, pieces of data associated with a specific postal code. But what we can do here is, again, we can look at the various metrics that we've got to look at. And sure enough, we've got something that says average age in here. And what we're seeing here is a distribution of the average age across the province, okay, for each of the different um, postal code regions within the province. Now, this doesn't look very pretty at all. Look, I've got all of these green circles, and this may very well fit a specific use case. We can look at, you know, average ages uh, in the Oakville area of, you know, 42, Milton 37. But it doesn't really give us a, a true overlay perspective. 
what we need to do is we need to convert these bubbles into more of a, a region-based map. And to do that is very straightforward. What we do is we hover over this little icon here, and this tells us if we want to overlay, uh, if we want to show markers on the screen, if we want to show a heat map on the screen, which we're showing right now, or in the case of what we do want to show is a region map. And I'll show you what that looks like by clicking on this here. And there we have it. What we've got here is we're looking at a region map of the average age distributed across the entire province of Ontario in Canada here. And uh, we've got the legend that tells us um, the various average ages for uh, each of these specific sections. Overlaid on top of that, we've got, of course, our line of business uh, e-commerce uh, average revenue in the blue circle. So as we scroll in here, you know, we can have a look at uh, where our uh, e-commerce store is having most of its effect. And if we have a look, uh, we can see it's in the middle of the ground here, usually in the, the 42 to 46 age group. There's a couple of different outliers here and there, but we're looking at kind of middle of the pack um, in terms of uh, the effectiveness of our e-commerce portal within a specific demographic. Okay. And that's really an example of how you can use Maps BI uh, to overlay your own line of business data versus other data that exists in the system. In this case, it was census data that we happen to want to take a look at. But, you know, we could have a look at just about any metric as it relates to your own business process.